Hey, this is Scott from Blue Fox Creative. I just thought, uh, I, I remember reading about Tesla. I'm a big fan of Tesla. And I remember stumbling on this story about how he was making uh, a human-made lightning. And it was, I, it was one of those, I don't know if you ever come across an article that just sort of sticks in your brain. And this is one of the many reasons why I love this guy, why he was such a special dude, why he was so cool. He was kind of a hacker and he was kind of a, you know, like a rebel. Uh, the guy was just incredible. So anyway, I just wanted, I thought it'd be kind of cool to, to talk about this lightning experiment that he did. And I've got some stuff I can read here and, and I'll just, just, just uh, sort of touch base on the story. So anyway, uh, the premise is, uh, in, when he had his laboratory in New York City, I think it was in New York City, New York, um, his lab burnt to the ground and it completely ruined him. He got really depressed. And um, he had a friend that worked at a power company in Colorado. It was a town called Colorado Springs. And this guy said, hey, look, Tesla, why don't you come out to Colorado Springs? Uh, I work at this power generation plant, and we'll just give you all the free power you want. So Tesla's like, really? So he got some, he scraped some money together, and he went out to Colorado, and he built this laboratory. Here's the picture of the laboratory. It doesn't look like anything really special. Um, believe it or not, this roof can come off because he was worried that the roof would catch on fire due to, his, due to his experiments. The roof can actually come off, but really what's important for this story is that uh, antenna that you see. It doesn't really look like an antenna. It's just a pole with a gigantic copper ball on top. Okay, So that's part of this experiment. Um, so let's see here. So what he was, the plan for his theory was that the, Earth's, the Earth is electrically conductive. Okay, his theory was that the Earth was conductive, meaning that electricity can freely pass through it. He didn't really know it for sure, but he, he had this theory. And he hooked up his Tesla coil to shoot energy directly into the Earth's core. Um, and he was, after months and months of experimentation to get the frequency right, see, it was like an experiment that was uh, dependent on having the right frequency of electricity. And he was experimenting, experimenting with the frequency, and he started getting calls from the townspeople in Colorado Springs, and they were talking about experiencing some strange things going on while he was doing this experimentation, this low, vo low voltage uh, frequency stuff. Um, and he, he, he figured it out, and he conducted a low voltage experiment to prove his theory, and it looked like it was going to work, okay? So... Um, then he thought about it and he said to himself, well, okay, I'm going to take the gloves off. We're going to go full bore on this thing and we're just going to let it go. We're just going to freaking put the energy into this thing and we're just going to let it run to see how, how big it can go. So um, here's, here's the explanation of what happened when he, when he just turned this thing on and let it really go. Um, let's see here. So it, go, it goes like this. It says, this is a, this is a first account of what happened. There was a there, when he turned on the, the, uh, the coil, there was a buzz from rows of oil capacitors and a roar from the spark gap, uh, as thick, a, a roar from the spark gap as a wrist thick arc, electrical arc jumped across it. Inside the lab was, inside the lab, the noise was deafening, but Tesla was outside watching the antenna. Any surge that returned to the area would run up the antenna and jump off as lightning. Okay. Off the antenna shot a six foot lightning bolt. The bolt kept going in steady, in a steady arc. Tesla watched carefully, for he wanted to see if the power would build up, if his wave theory would work. Soon the lightning emitting from the tower was 20 feet long, then 50. The returning surges were growing more powerful, 80 feet. Now the thunder was, was following each lightning bolt. 100 feet, 120 feet. The lightning shot upwards off the antenna. Thunder was heard, booming around Tesla now. The sound was deafening and it was heard 22 miles away in the town of Cripple Creek. The meadow Tesla was standing in was lit up with an electrical discharge, much like St. Elmo's fire, casting a blue glow. His theory had worked. There didn't seem to be an upper limit to the returning surges. He was creating the most powerful electrical surge ever created by man. That moment he set the record, which he still holds, for the largest man-made lightning. Suddenly, the experiment halted. 
The lightning discharges stopped. The thunder quit. Tesla ran into the lab and discovered that the power company had shut off the power feed. He got on the phone and called them and shouted at them, You've stopped my experiment. What are you guys doing? The foreman replied that Tesla had just overloaded the generators and set them afire. They were be, they were, the crew was busy putting out the fires in the windings, and they replied that it would be a cold day in hell before Tesla would receive any more free power. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> oh my God! Can you imagine what that must have been like being at door, being at that lab at that time? I would die to go and witness that. Oh my God! This guy was this this dude Tesla was epic, man. This guy was awesome. I wish I could spend just literally five minutes with a guy and just talk to him. Ten minutes. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this this story. Um, it's one of those stories that that I just love. I, I just love from Tesla. Um, check them out. Go on YouTube and, and and check out the stories about Tesla. It is absolutely fantastic. Scott Victor signing off. Take care.